Hi, this is Dr. Rick Upchurch, and I am here to share with you some basics regarding Excel. Hold on, here we go. I am using a data sheet that is already uh, prepared for me, and I'm only showing you a portion of that data sheet. It contains, uh, as we scroll down, I don't know, a couple hundred, a little over a couple hundred rows, but we're only going to work with the first few rows here. The first thing I want to show you has to do with adjusting column width, and you'll notice as you look down that uh, some of the columns, uh, the data and the columns are cut off, and I want to adjust that. And I know you've seen another way to do that in the training video, but I want to show you a, a simpler method that is very effective. And if you bring your cursor up into between A and B, notice how it changes to an arrow going both directions over a line by having it right there and then double clicking it automatically adjusts the column to the widest entry in that particular column and so you could go through and do that for the same thing for B and C but if you have a lot of columns that can get to be a little time consuming and so what I'm going to do is show you a quick method by highlighting all the cells and then letting my cursor find in between any of them, it doesn't matter which one, as long as they're all highlighted. If you put your cursor between any of the highlighted cells and so that the arrow is showing both directions and double click, it will automatically adjust all of your cells at the same time to the same uh, factor, that is whatever is the widest entry within that particular column. And that can be extremely useful for doing all of your data quickly, easily. Another thing that I'm going to show you has to do with filtering. Notice I've clicked that icon between A and 1 to select my entire spreadsheet. I'm going to select the Data tab across the top, and I'm going to turn on my filter by clicking on the funnel. Notice how now at the top of the columns there is a little drop down for each of the rows and let's look quickly at this drop down it will allow me to sort from A to Z from Z to A if I had colors in the cells uh, it, would, it would allow me to sort by that it will allow me to select or deselect any information I want to and that can be extremely useful for some very fast uh, filtering and or sorting I use this kind of method all the time for sorting I uh, just find it to be extremely, extremely useful. We'll sort it from Z to A while we're here. And there it's popped everything in uh, from Z to A, September being the last and working its way forward. So that's kind of how to do that. I'm going to turn that off now. I don't like to leave it on uh, because it seems, at least to me, to conflict once in a while with some other information. Another thing that I'd like to show you has to do with this, um, this green bar down here at the bottom. And notice right here, um, I've got all these September cells. Let's just highlight all the number of September cells. There we go. All right, notice down here it counts them. So I have 18. And so that shows up in the bottom, and that's helpful. I mean, I can count the number of transactions in September very quickly, 18. Um, if I wanted to go down and do it for another set of class, another set of transactions, uh, I could simply go down and highlight those, and I would get another 18. Uh, very easy to do. But now let's try this. Let's highlight all the numerical values or the financial transactions for the month of September. And notice I still have my count of 18, but I also have two other numbers that show up down here: the average 538.27 and the sum, 9,688.93. This is, this is also an extremely useful feature in Excel, allowing you to do some down, quick and, uh, quick and dirty information ana and analysis. Uh, notice I've just highlighted the volcano blend here for September, and I can say that there are three of those. I can give you an average, I can give you a sum, all of that's very fast and very easy to use, and all of it's right there for you to use in a very easy way. Now, I've not done any real calculations to this point. I've only done summaries or sorting and looked at information as I've pulled up or down on the sheet here. 
And so I'm going to take you to the bottom now. Notice that this says raw data. That tab says raw data. No one I know who works with large amounts of information in Excel ever works off of their original spreadsheet. What they do is they copy their spreadsheet and then work off of the copy or copies, as the case may be. And so we're going to make a copy quickly. I'm going to right click on the tab. I'm going to choose Move or Copy. I'm going to create a copy and move it to the end. And notice what name it gives it, Raw Data, and it's a second spreadsheet. Now I can either double click on that or I can right click on it and hit Rename. So I'm going to rename this now to Calculations. And I'll be working in this spreadsheet now, as opposed to the raw data spreadsheet, so that if for whatever reason uh, I do something that could endanger this information, it won't endanger my ability to go back and start over again if I have to. And I have done this long enough to know that uh, that is a very distinct possibility. Let me just say it that way. So I'm going to go to my calculations sheet. And now what I want to do is I want to talk to you about uh, the difference between a static and a dynamic cell address. This is address G3, row, column G, row 3. This is a cell address G3 for the cell that's highlighted. I'm going to put a number in there. I'm going to put in the number 53% and hit Enter. And now I want to use this number in a formula. And basically, I'm going to say that this is the cost of business. That is, it requires, and see how that overruns, so I'm going to double click on that. It takes 53% of all of my sales just to pay my overhead. Uh, but what is that number? Well, I'm going to do a formula to find out. I'm going to hit the equal sign, and I'm going to choose D2, and hit the asterisk, and now hit G3, where I've got that variable located, and there's the formula. D2 times G3, that makes sense, right? It's the cost of business times the sales. And so of that $995, 527 of it is the actual cost of the business that I had to do, my overhead. And note from previous videos, if you grab this handle and pull it down, what should happen then, or what you think will happen is that the calculation will carry forward and you'll get the cost of business for each of these other particular transactions, but that's not the case. And that is, has to do with the difference between a static and a dynamic cell address. This cell address here, D2 and G3, assumes, or at least Excel assumes, that if you go and pull this or copy this down to the next cells, that it will also move down. Notice when I move down here, it says D3 times G4 meaning it moved down one here and it wants to move down one here. It is alive and thinking that it will move down in the same fashion. But that's not what we want. So we need to tell it not to. Now here's how you do that. By coming back up into the cell and highlighting or double clicking on the particular address that you want to be static, that is stay in the same place, you can now change that to a static address by either typing this in, but it's easier if you just click F4 from the top of your keyboard. F4 will put in the static address. Dollar sign G times dollar sign G dollar sign 3 is the static cell address, meaning don't move the cell. Don't move the column. Don't move the row. Uh, don't move this cell. Now, dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign G, dollar sign 3, if you press F4 again, notice how it changes to just D, G, dollar sign 3. Press F4 again, it changes to dollar sign G, 3. Press it again, it goes back to just G, 3, and then F4 again. So F4 is merely a toggle switch that moves you between one dynamic address and another, or rather between one status of addresses and another. So now we have a static address, D2, which is dynamic, and G3, which is static. I'll hit enter. Didn't change the value because all we did was define exactly where we're pointing it. And now I'm going to pull down a copy and show Bing. See how now if I go here, it's D3, 
times g3 and d4 times g3 and d5 times g3. And so it's very possible for you to hold a specific calculation in place. And you'll use this more than you know. Very useful function. Now I'm going to add another calculation because my profit would typically be my sales minus the cost of business. So I'm going to put in another formula equals, I'm going to click on D2, hit the minus key, and put in E2. There's my formula. Both of them are dynamic addresses. I'll hit enter. And so there's my profit on the transactions. And now I'll pull that down. Obviously I could have pulled it to the bottom of the row. So I can now go through and using my static address set up my cost of business and then be able to calculate my profit from each of those. And I know you, you saw this in the training videos, but I'm going to click here into E and go back to the Home tab and see this sigma here at the top. I'm going to choose that and go down and hit Sum, and it's going to summarize all the cells that are highlighted in blue. Now I can grab the handle at the top and adjust that if I choose to. If I click uh, here and then, uh, and then click up in the formula, I can click up and down any way I choose to to define that and notice it adjusts it. So there's my formula. And here, look, let's look at that. Why is that all hashtag? It could be because the column width is wrong, but it's not minus 1700. Something's problem. Let's look at the formula. D10 minus E10. Well, that's not right. This is not D. This is not that minus that. So what it's done is automatically assume we want that number to go in there, but we don't. So I'm going to highlight that and grab it over. And notice, because we're still dealing with dynamic addresses, it assumed that this one was E minus um, e, the sum of E to E, E2 to E9. Now it's the sum of F2 to F9. So we've created an opportunity here for us to be able to get the sum for those features. All right. Now, I'm going to show you one other quick feature that uh, I think you'll find useful. Down here at the bottom, I'm going to click on the plus tab. I'm going to rename this tab as uh, variables. And I'm going to put up here cost of business. And I'll make that bigger and make it broader and put in 57%. Okay. Now I'm going to come back over here and in my calculation, I'm going to change G3. I'm going to back that off. And I'm going to click the tab down here at the bottom and click that and hit enter. Now notice what happened here. I changed what I multiplied it by from this number on this spreadsheet to a separate spreadsheet. And you can change and use calculations across multiple spreadsheets. And sometimes it's very helpful to put all of your variable data on one spreadsheet and all of your calculations and, and other information on another because it keeps everything looking very clean uh, as, a, as opposed to this. Right now, if I try to print this, I've got this 53% stuck out here at the side when I don't know what that may mean and how it may fit, but I can clearly define it over here as the cost of business. So I'm going to come back now. And again, I want to make my B3 into a static address. So I highlight it and then press F4. I hit Enter. And now I want to just pull it down into the same block of information. And it changes everything. So that allows me to do a very quick uh, calculation. And uh, I think you will find that all of these last things in this particular summary are things that you will probably wind up using uh, quite a bit. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to check the help menu at the top, a little question mark, or even to type into uh, YouTube the question you have. There's a video on literally almost everything. Thanks a lot, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this short video.